Hello and welcome to Having a Western Super Season 2 and we are in the National League. Surprisingly, we got promoted last season through the playoffs, finishing second behind Oval, but we still broke the 100 point mark, but it wasn't enough to get top spot. Well up in the playoffs for well, a penalty shootout. If you've seen the last episode, you understand what I mean. If you haven't seen it, go and check out before checking this one out. And we're now in the National League. The rules of this save is very simple. I can only use English players. I can only sign English players. I can only use English players. And it's more difficult this season when I've lost 15 players through the contract expiring and not being renewed or don't want to be renewed. So with that, I've had to bring in 17 new players. The whole squad rebuild. And when you're down in the National League with a very, very low reputation, no one wants to come to you. Really, no one wants... No one of a decent quality wants to come to you. Because you can't offer them decent wages, and they're not very good. So this season, we could struggle. Let's have a quick run through of some of the players I have signed at the 17. As you can see, there is a load of players here. A couple of loans. We've got a couple of loan players in from higher leagues, which hopefully help. But even then, some of, they're not really good enough. The youth team players. And when you try to build a squad to win, to get promoted or stay into the league, you need players who are going to take that step and then step above it as well, if you know what I mean. So the first one we have signed was uh, Sonny Singh. Free transfer. He's all right. Uh, Tanga, a right wing winger. Charlie Preston, goalkeeper. More of a backup goalkeeper to what we have to, uh, to Griffiths. Riley Snow. Oh, and always probably a squad player. Tom Oylet, hopefully I'm saying that right. Decent winger. Archie Whitehorse at midfielder. Henry Ambassa, defender. Leo Black, a central midfielder. Jemaya Lomlu, a striker. Doing right so far, scoring a few goals. In fact, he's got four in six appearances so far in this season. Okay, he doesn't look like he's doing very well, but he is doing well. Sam Joyce, defender. Jordan, Norville, Williams. That right uh, left back. Jacob Pinnington on loan from Luton, a right back. Max Dickoff, a winger. Michael Laffery, a central midfielder, defensive midfielder. Uh, Jasper Patterson, a left winger. Joe Felix, a right back winger, midfield. Along the right hand side. A number loan player in Isaac Olaylele, a striker on loan from NK Dons. Got no strikers. All of our strikers left. We've been Reed left. Marlon Jackson left as well. And the last player is Kieran Edworthy on loan from Plymouth. Another striker. Like I said, we've lost a load of strikers. We've got a whole new team. So this is the team that we've got. A lot of... Not a bad squad. It's quite decent. A lot of potential. That's what we want. Potential players. We have tweaked the tactic slightly. Now using the 4 3 3 Cisco that we used in the last Glory Hunter with Bayern Munich when we were undefeated, invincible, won a Champions League. Now watch Glory Hunter, go and watch Glory Hunter. Season 5 is going to be an absolute banger as well. Wait to see that one. But we're using this tactic. It's a 4 4 2, but it's classed as a 4 3 3. If I do pick best 11 without restrictions, this is what it comes up with. With Griffiths in goal, Pinnington, and Gugpissi, and Bassa, back in Lennon. Laffey, Whitehall, Rowe, Dickoff, Alomnu, and Edworthy are starting lineup. Edworthy's out injured. He's out injured for two more weeks. So, schedule wise, how have we been getting on now? We've not been doing too bad in, in the league so far. First game of the season, we lost 2 1 to Crawley, who came down from League 2 last year. Losing 2 1 is not a bad result. Beat Flight 3 1, our first home game of the season. We then lost to the other team that came down from uh, League 2, Warsaw 4 2. They scored two late goals, nothing to be ashamed of. Smashed oldest shot 5 1 with Jamie Saul getting himself two goals. A two all draw against Barnett, who maybe last year didn't perform well. This year could be different. And we just beat Dorkin 3 2 with a 96 minute winner from Jamie Saul. And in the league, this is where we are sitting just outside the playoffs, which is a very, very good considering at the start of the season we are predicted to finish 23rd in the relegation zone. One place above Boston, so not bad. So if we can finish in the mid-table, if we can finish anywhere away from relegation, that would be absolutely fantastic. Finances, we haven't got any. We've got no money left. We're in the red overall balance of 65 grand. Hopefully with a good FA Cup run again that we had last year. 
that will shoot up and we'll be fine. But this year it's unknown. It's an unknown season. I think this tactic might be very overpowered. If we can consolidate mid-table, it's fantastic. Yeah, we can get a good cut run as well. Be a good year. We have got the FA Cup. We're not going to win the FA Cup. We might have a chance for the FA Trophy. Or oh, get somewhere with the FA Trophy. Right, it's now time to simulate Season 2 of my homegrown challenge. Where will we end up at the end of the season? September and we drew 1-1 with Bromley after Jamie Sewell scored in a 43rd minute of a strike just outside the area before James Venons in the 56th got Bromley their equaliser. We also drew with Gateshead 2 all. Tom Oyok in the 31st minute getting us a great start just after the half an hour mark before Aidan Rutledge in injury time of the first half got Gateshead's equaliser. Kieran Edworthy got an end of a cross to make it 2-1 but three minutes later Colin McBride also got on the end of a cross to make it 2-2. Two, two. And at the end of the month, we're sat in the playoffs. Five wins, three draws, three defeats. October, and we started off well with a 4-1 win over Scarborough Athletic. Archie Whitehall, a minute before the half-time whistle, gave us the lead at half-time. Max Dickhoff made it two, ten minutes after the restart. But on the hour mark, Ben Bills got Scarborough back into it. Two minutes later, Oscar Goban restored our two-goal lead to make it 3-1. Then Umonyu, with 15 minutes to go, wrapped up the scoring and we win 4-1. In the FA Cup fourth qualifying round, there was a shock result, losing 1-0 to Avery in the 51st minute for Ashley Chambers. No cup run for us this season. But then we locked horns with last season's enemies, Yeovil, drawing 1-1. Jordan Maguire drew getting Yeovil off to a great start after 18 minutes before Michael Laffrey in the 57th minute got our equaliser. We had a chance to win it in the 95th minute, but Dickoff missed his penalty. And at the end of October, we're still sat in the playoffs on 28 points. We're actually doing it, guys. November, and we face one of the bookies' favourites to win the league, Chesterfield, drawing 2-2. Thanks to her own goal from Marcus Bertinelli in the 93rd minute. Quickly with a penalty in the 53rd minute, 1 0 before Jasper Patton got equaliser in the 78th minute. Tom Naylor in the 80th restored Chesterfield's lead, but a mistake in the back cost Chesterfield all three points and we come away with one. We needed another late equaliser against Rochdale, another league favourite. Ryan East in the 24th minute again watched out the lead before Archie Whitehall in the second minute of injury time with a goal from outside the box giving us a point as well. This is not a drill. We are still in the playoffs at the end of the month. December and it is FA Trophy third round and we're against Maystone coming away after a 7-6 win on penalties. Edward, we got us underway in 20 minutes with a great shot on the edge of the box before Ollie Pierce got the equaliser and that is how the game ended 1-1. It went to penalties. We win 7-6 on penalties. All the penalties were world class. It was just one of those days for Maidstone. Even though we do miss one, Maidstone missed two and we go through to the fourth round of the FA Trophy. We managed to beat one of the teams that came down from League 2, Crawley 2-0. Two Max Dickoff from the penalty spot on the 12th minute before Kieran Edward we goal 10 minutes before time, make sure we had all three points. And then we managed to draw 2-2 against another team that came down, Warsaw. Oscar Goben in the 17th minute getting a goal scoring underway. 
before Danny Johnson equalised in the 65th minute. Among you in the 69th minute, making it 2 1 to us with 20 minutes to go. But two minutes later, Connor Wilkinson get Warsaw's equaliser and his points were shared. And at Christmas time, we're thinking miracles might happen here. We are still in a chance for promotion at the halfway mark. And in the new year, we face Truro in the FA Trophy fourth round, coming away with a 1-0 win. Engelpissi goal in the 34th minute was enough to push Truro out of the competition. We also scooped a 1-0 win over Sonny Hall Moors. Tom Oya in the 13th minute with the goal, making sure we've had a good start to January with the three points. And at the end of January, we are only 12 points off Chesterfield who are sitting in top. We're above the evil, always good. February and we relied on a penalty shootout again, this time in the FA Trophy, fifth round against Brackley. Dick off with the goal in the 52nd minute giving us the edge before Kieran Bullivant in the 67th minute made sure the game went to extra time and penalties all the penalties were world class well taken but unfortunately Allende misses for Brackley and we go through to the next round form was good before we placed working they absolutely battered us. 3-1. An own goal in the first minute by Jasper Patton. Made an easy start. Then Josh Smith, two minutes later, made it 2-0 Woking and three minutes have ever been played. Reese Craig Cox made it 3-0 on the 63rd minute and we got a constellation goal in the 71st minute from Michael Laffrey. We were well and truly beat. And at the end of February, we have snuck out of the playoffs. Not really a good month for us. March, and we face Hartlepool in the FA Trophy quarterfinals. Coming away with a 4-2 win. Riley Snow in the 13th minute got the score and underway. Before Tom Yolliet, 78th minute, made it 2-0. Bit of squeaky bum though, when Manny... Disavier in 83rd minute got one goal back for Hartlepool. But on your new in 86th minute made sure we had that two goal lead. Matt Everett in the 88th minute made it a bit of squeaky bum at Western. Before in the 92nd minute, on your new gets his second goal and that puts us into the semi final. It was a scrappy game at bottom of the league, Ebsleep, but we came away with a 3 2 win. Pat Webber in the 26th minute getting the game first goal before Ben Chapham getting an equaliser for Ebsley. A low late in the 39th minute making it 2-1 but Tyrell Ginwa in the 43rd minute did this to make the scores level at half time and then a Kieran Thompson own goal in the 75th minute gave us all three points. Maybe our league form was about to change after winning 4-1 at Boston. Max Dickoff in the 45th plus one minute with a goal giving us a lead at halftime before Jasper Pattenden, three minutes after halftime, gave us a 2-0 comfortable lead. Max Dickoff didn't want to get out of class and he scored his second and our third before Scott Gregory got one goal back for Boston thinking game on. Isaac Aloli in the 78th minute wrapped the scoring up with a finish on his left foot. And with three games left, we have somehow managed to get ourselves back in the playoffs. April and it was FA Trophy semi-final time when we faced Chesterfield. Unfortunately, we went out on a penalty shootout after the game finished 1-1. Kieran McCucken in the 67th minute got the scoring underway. Before seven minutes later, Kieran Edworthy got our equaliser and the game finished 1-1. Which means goes to extra time there was no other goals so it went to a penalty shootout in the penalty shootout Chesterfield were absolutely clinical not missing a penalty unfortunately Odelay missed it for us but we lose five free and penalties after a good cup run and the final league fixture was away to Hartlepool a win here and we are in the playoffs 
Ford got Hartlepool underway after nine minutes and we thought, oh no, we're going to blow it. But Ole in the 32nd minute, getting us an equaliser. And then in the second half, we stepped up. Only up in the 58th minute. Edward, we're getting one in the 60th minute. Ole with a penalty in the 73rd minute. And then Ed Worthy wrapping up the scoring in the 77th minute. Giving us all three points and cementing our place in the playoffs. Finishing fifth on 80 points. But we do have a first round game to play. And that first round game was against Scarborough. He beat us in extra time. Harry Green in the 12th minute. Giving Scarborough the perfect start before Isaac Ole in the 29th minute getting us back in the game at 1-1. The game went to extra time and Cameron Newbank in the 115th minute slot on the ball past Griffiths and our season was over. What a season that was. Right, we didn't get promotion. I wasn't expecting promotion. We didn't get relegated either. That's the main thing we had to concern ourselves with was not getting relegated. We had a decent cut run in the FA Trophy, losing in the semi-finals. Okay, we didn't make it to the first round of the FA Cup, but hey, it's just football. Anything can happen. And we finished in the playoffs, losing in the playoffs first round to Scarborough. Okay, they finished below us, but extra time, you know, one of those things. But to finish fifth in our first season since we were predicted to finish 23rd, that's a hell of an achievement from us. What an achievement. 14 defeats, 8 draws, 24 wins. 14 defeats, that's a lot of defeats. So defensively, we're not as sound as I thought we might be. So we might have to look at getting a couple players in to improve our defence. Maybe a new goalkeeper. Maybe a striker who's going to score goals. I don't think our striker scored many. But Dawkin won the FA Trophy, beating Chesterfield in the final in extra time. 2-1. So we set semi-finals. We had a bit of a luck getting there. We had a couple of penalty shoots out. We lost against Chesterfield in the penalty shoot out. Quarterfinals and we smashed Hartlepool 4-2. Fifth round we went to put on penalties after one all draw against Brackley. Fourth round we beat Truro only 1-0. Third round we beat Maidstone on penalties. It was a hell of a cup run as well, let's be honest. Semi-finals of a cup. It's always good. It's the ones you hate to lose though. You rather lose a final than a semi-final because you know you're this close away from getting there. FA Cup, we didn't get out of the qualifying round, lost Avery 1-0. We won the FA Cup in the end. Chelsea won 2-1. So squad-wise then let's see who've got what. Jeremiah Imari with 19 goals and 39 starts. Or Alehi with 10. Edward with 10. Dickoff with 10. Patterson with 10. Goblin with 10. Oliot with 8. Lappy with 8, 7. Archie Whitehall got 4. Not a lot of goals, let's be honest. Assist wise, Jace Felix got 12. Oliot with 10. George McLennan with 10, 10 as well. Jeremy with 9. Jasper Patton with 8. Goals wise, not fantastic. Ability wise, Archie, Archie Whitehall is our best player we've got. Value wise, our striker, 75 to 130k. Now, we if we keep hold of him, fantastic. If we sell him for that price, that could rebuild most of the team. Transfer budget-wise, we have 15,000 again next season with a £2,500 wage budget. That's enough to bring in at least three players, maybe four. Three transfers, mind you. We're going to rely heavily next year on the loan system, I think. Hopefully, our reputation has gone up so more players will come to us. But all in all, it was not been a bad season whatsoever. What we are going to try and do is improve the training facilities and the youth facilities and also the youth level as well. Just so we can get some youth players in. 15 year old here, centre back, Nathan Embleton. Can we use him? He's English. Could improve a lot. Doesn't look outstanding. John Kane can't use him because he's from New Zealand, but he could be a good player in the future. But our youth team is not looking great. We haven't got a great youth setup. If we can get a brilliant youth setup, fantastic. It means we can bring them in, use the English players, sell the non English players, 
uh, reputation is slowly going up. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please smash the like button, comment down below, and subscribe if you're new around here and want to see more of my FM24 content. Next season, we're still in the National League. Hopefully, we can build on our fifth place finish. Maybe get playoffs again. That's got to be the aim now. But until next time, guys, take a stay, look after yourself, and I'll see you all very, very soon. Cheers.